अच्छा यू यू चिल्ड्रन आर वेरी फॉर्चुनेट नो बिकॉज बिकॉज यू कैन गो टू स्कूल कैन रीड कैन प्ले कैन ईट एंड एंड ओवरऑल यू कैन ड्रीम यू ऑल आर वेरी लकी दैट यू ऑल आर अचीविंग द थिंग्स विच कैन सिक्योर योर फ्यूचर you all can realize that you all are children and and you can enjoy your childhood you can feel but but you must have seen a boy sitting with his cobbler father and mending school shoes while he himself could not wear these shoes hello everyone I am Reena Mishra from SG EC. Welcome you all here, and and I am really uh, getting emotional to inform you all about the children deprived of all the facilities, even with their necessary necessities also. Yes, my dear students, here we are going to discuss. We are going to discuss a moment to you all where the speaker, the speaker, Mr. Kailash Satyarthi. is getting honored at the nobel prize distribution function actually this chapter set our children free is based on his speech delivered on that platform let me tell you that uh, this speech is a powerful argument made by him and uh, of course it it opens our eyes and draws our attention towards the piteous condition of some of our fellow human beings like our children this wonderful and powerful argument takes us to to the path of where we all chant every day astama satkamaya tamsoma chaturkamaya this lesson this argument this speech is a kind of a statement towards inactive people who are sitting and not doing anything for the children who are not getting anything here in this world before i start this speech to you let me tell you something about the author of this chapter that is mr kalash satyarthi mr kalash satyarthi is an indian school reformer who campaigned against child labor in india and he advocated the universal right to education since he campaigned against child labor so he was a renowned activist for children's right he was born on january 11 1954 in vidisha he has won many awards like nobel peace prize robert f kennedy human rights award and many more that i really don't know he is human rights activist from india who has been at the forefront of global movement to the end child slavery and exploitation since 1980 when he gave up a lucrative career as an electric as in as an electrical engineer to initiate a quit against cruelty or crusade against child servitude as a cross roots activist 
Kalash and the Grassroot Movement founded by him. He founded a movement Bachpan Bachao Andolan. And uh, this Bachpan Bachao Andolan has liberated more than 83,000 children from exploitation and developed a successful model for their education, rehabilitation and reintegration into the mainstream of society. Let me tell you that uh, as a worldwide campaigner, Mr. Satarthi has been the architect of the single largest civil society network for the most exploited children, the global march against child labor, which is a worldwide coalition of children's rights organizations, teachers union and trade unions. His efforts led to the adoption of ILO Convention 182 on Worst Forms of Child Labor in 1999. Let me discuss you this story. As I tell you, as I told you before that this is speech a powerful argument made by him at the platform of Nobel Peace Prize distribution function. And here, he tries to draw our attention towards the condition of our children who are deprived of. Here, he, start, he started with, I am representing here the sound of silence, the cry of innocence and the face of invisibility. You know, when I read this line, the cry of innocence, the face of invisibility really i i got i got emotional and and cry of innocence means the cry of the children who need help and attention but do not get it they they cry for it but no one is there to listen their cries he says that he is representing the face of invisibility. The face of invisibility means those who have been neglected, those who could not get anything, those who are deprived of everything. He shared his experience like uh, 20 years ago in the foothills of Himalayas. He happened to meet a small skinny child laborer who asked him, Is the world so poor that it could not give him a toy and a book instead of forcing him to take a gun or tool? One more incident that he shared uh, approx 12 years before. 12 years back, he met a child mother from the streets of Colombia who asked him that she had never had a dream but she asked could her child had one. He, he, was, he was very grieved, he was very grief stricken when he heard this one. He also stated that the Holy Quran says, kill not your children because of poverty. He says that Quran verdicts, Quran verdicts that there is no greater violence than to deny the dreams of our children. He says that Quran refuses to accept that the world is so poor when just one week of global military expenditure can bring all children to classrooms. He says that he refuses, he, he is refusing to accept that all the laws and constitutions, police and judges are unable to protect our children. 
he firmly refuses to accept that the shackles of slavery can ever be stronger than the quest for freedom he was delivering then these uh, wonderful lines then he stated that he refused to accept that all the temples and mosques and churches and prayers houses have no place for dreams of our children he says that his only aim in life is that every child is free to be a child every child is free to grow and develop every child is free to eat free to sleep free to see daylight he's dreaming of uh he's dreaming of a child who is free to laugh free to cry free to play free to learn free to go to school and above all free to dream he admitted that uh, he has privilege of working with many courageous people who have the same aim and he confessed that they have never given up against any threat or attack and they had no will he stated that that uh, they have made progress in last couple of decades and he demand he demanded at that platform to the world that let's make no mistakes great challenges still remain he asks to his friends that the biggest challenge or biggest crisis knocking on the doors of human kind is fear and intolerance fear and intolerance is in human activity that could not be acceptable at all he praised the young people like malala he says that uh, malala neglects all threatening and and dares dares to step forward towards the education he address malala as a daughter including katan sorry including kainat and shazia and and the daughters from africa and from of course all over the world he says that they all are rising up and choosing peace over violence tolerance over actor, uh, extremism and courage over fear I think I should tell you something about Malala Malala Yousafzai Let me tell you Malala Uh Malala Yousafzai is a very very young girl who really who really stands forward before the threatening lot of threatening she she would not she would not let her feet down towards the tyrants people as here mr satarth is addressing malala as his daughter so let me tell you that she is a pakistani activist for female education and the youngest nobel prize laureate she was born on july 12 1997 in pakistan and is a renowned activist for the rights to education especially female education she won many awards like nobel peace prize Philadelphia Liberty Medal and Order of Smile and many more. 
Mr. Yusuf, uh, sorry, Mr. Satyati says that the solutions are emerging, but these solutions cannot be found in the deliberation in confessions conferences all, alone and cannot be found in perception from a distance. He says, he simply says that we have solution of these problems, we have many solutions of these problems, but these solutions cannot be found, cannot be decided only in the meetings. No decision could be made in the meetings. He just tells a story. He tells a story that um, one day a heavy fire had broken out in the forest. All the animals were running away including the lion, the king of the forest. Suddenly he saw a tiny bird rushing towards the fire. He asked the world, what are you doing? To the lion's surprise, the bird replied, I'm going to extinguish the fire. The lion laughed and said, wow, can you do it? Keeping just one drop of water in your beak. The bird was adamant and she said, I'm doing my bit. Yes, yes, students, this is very, very wonderful line. I'm doing my bit. We live an age of rapid globalization. We are connected through high speed internet. We exchange our goods and services in one single global market. Thousands of flights every day connect us from one corner to another corner of the globe. But there is one serious disconnection and that is lack of compassion. Mr. Satati says that let us inculcate and transform these individuals compassion into a global compassion. He demands global, globalized compassion. He illustrated that once Mahatma Gandhi said, if we are to teach real peace in this world, we shall have to begin with children. And he asks the world to unite th through compassion for the children. He says that uh, to, to secure the future of our child labor, we need collective actions. We need collective actions with a sense of urgency. He says every single minute matters. Every single child matters. Every single childhood matters. Therefore, he says that he challenges the passivity and pessimism surrounding our children. He firmly says that he challenges the culture of silence and this culture of passivity. This culture of neutrality. He requested all of us that we must be bold, we must be ambitious and we must have the will. We must keep our promises. He says, today beyond the darkness, he can see the smiling faces of children in the blinking star. Today, in every wave of every ocean, he sees children are playing and dancing. Today, in every planet, in every tree and, and mountain, he sees children growing freely with dignity. He requested all of us that he wants us to see and feel this today inside ourselves. 
he said that today he could see thousands of Mahatma Gandhis, Martin Luther Kings and Nelson Mandela's calling on us. He requests us that democratize knowledge, that we should democratize the knowledge, that we should universalize justice. He says, he says that he calls upon us in this classroom and people all across the world. He says that he is calling for a march from exploitation to education. In his speech, he is calling for a march from poverty to shared prosperity. A march from slavery to liberty and a march from violence to peace. With this speech, he gives us a lesson and requests the world. He requests, let's march from ignorance to awakening. Let's march from darkness to light. Let's march from mortality to divinity. Not here he stopped. He elaborated one more story and that I am going to tell you here. Uh, my dear students, let me tell you about Mr. Satharthi that uh, he is also the founding president of the global campaign for education. An exemplar civil society movement working to end the global education crisis and good wave international for rising consumer awareness and positive actions in the carpet industries. Yes, since his childhood, Kalash had always questioned the wrong and unjust. He could not tolerate any wrong, any misdeed happen to anyone. He always questioned the wrong. He always questioned the unjust. As a young child of five years, he was disturbed deeply when he saw a small boy walking with his cobbler father, shining shoes at the school gate on the first day of school. He could not understand why some children were different from him. And really, trust me, it did not take Kalash much time to understand the stark contrast between his life and that of the life of Cobbler's son. On one hand, where his family had performed a religious ceremony, to mark the first day of his school life and on the other hand there there was the son of the cobbler with a swollen face and no dream in his eyes kalash was very sad about what he had seen he went to the classroom and asked his teacher about the small boy sitting outside the school gate. His teacher discouraged his question. He asked him yet again, only to be scolded and instructed to, the atten to, uh, to be attentive in the class rather than thinking about what was happening outside. Kalash's inquisitive nature was unsettled and several questions kept echoing in his mind. He asked to the world, okay, we, should have com we should have compassion for our children, but whose children are they? 
whose children are they who is touch footballs and yet have never played with one whose children are they who harvest coca yet have never tasted chocolate whose children are they who are dying of ebola whose children are they who are kidnapped and held hostage he said that that they all are our children now he record a story and tell that he tells that one day an 8 year old girl whom he rescued from integrational forced labor from stone quarries and when she was sitting in his car right after her rescue she asked him why did you not come earlier the girl asked the girl asked to satarthi why did not you come earlier her angry question still shakes him and has the power to shake the whole world children are questioning our inactions and watching our actions and he prays to the world let us march from ignorance to awakening let us march from darkness to light let us march from mortality to divinity yes my dear students this is uh, actually this is part 1 of this chapter and in our part 2 we will be meeting with our next story with our next poem now till then my dear student goodbye